Welcome back. I'm Dees and this is my workshop. Today, uh, just a quick introduction. Uh, I'm going to be remaking the internal sleeve that goes on my AXA style tool post. Um, I explain it more in the upcoming video, but basically in order to get this thing running, I created a, a replacement sli mounting sleeve. This is the original in order to mount it to my compound. Um, I can do better than this. The, you know, this was one of my earlier projects, but I wanted to get it on there. It's very rough. Um, I, I used gear changes in order to do threading. It's been a success. This is still working fine, but I can do better than this. And that's what this video is going to be about. Probably be a two part series. I'm thinking, um, more than one anyway. Um, but thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoy the video. Welcome back to DE's workshop. Uh, I'm gonna start another project. This is a, another remake of the, the sleeve that mounts my AXA quick change tool post. I got a, I don't know, a three or four part series creating the original one, well, recreating the original one, um, but I'm not real happy with the finish. This is very functional, this, this works. This is doing its job, but I can do better. So I'm gonna make make another one of these, but I'm going to do better. Um, so just a quick overview. This, this is the AXA tool post, quick change tool post. There's the threaded uh, relief hole on the bottom and that this is designed for a T-nut um, or a different way of mounting, not really designed for a small mini lathe like mine, uh, the smaller ones anyway. It comes with this bolt to mount to mount it to but this is too big to fit into my compound the the top slide the hole is actually 10 millimeter bolt um, not this larger one i really wish it was i uh, sure would be nice just to be able to use everything that came with it i kind of like this the look and feel of this i might recreate this someday with my uh threaded rod and you know i'll get to that someday but for now this is, I can't use this and I don't want to modify this. Go back and watch the other series if you want to see the first, um, the first attempt that, that was a success. Um, but this was the original one that came with it. That sits down there and then when it threads in, it sits nice and flush to the top of the, the wedge tightening system. Um, that's... That, that, you know, uh, this thickness here is what makes it flush. So this was the original one, and even its machining is questionable in my opinion. This was from the source. I didn't make this part. Um, it's got a lot of burrs, rough edges. I could certainly clean it up, and it, you'll never see it's cosmetic. But anyway, it, I couldn't use this because the threads are too long, and it won't mount onto my compound. So I decided to remake it, and this is the one that I came up with. The only change from the original design that I made was I left the top the top portion much thicker than it really needed to be just because I could uh, there was no really rhyme or, no rhyme or reason it's not <clears throat> big enough to fit in there like I want it to but this was the material I had at the time that I made this part since then uh, I've had some material raw stock given to me by a viewer uh, this is wilford this is going to be the second project that i use his generous materials that he's given me uh, on now he gave me inch and three eighths mild steel and this is going to work out perfect so this is going to be the second project with his material and i'm going to recreate this much more accurately I'm going to try to make a much more cleaner, impressive finish, something that looks nice. The di main difference is going to be, everything's going to be the same, except that thread at the bottom needs to be shorter. And again, that is to accommodate the boss on my tool post where it mounts. Let me uh, 
bring you over here while we're showing you everything. This is its own video. Maybe you didn't catch the other ones. Go back and watch them. But that's what I'm talking about. This has to sit over that. Otherwise, it, it, it pushes it up. So, anyway, that's the idea. So, we're going to start remaking this. Um, again, it's going to be the same, same dimensions, except this threaded portion will be shorter. So, there's the introduction. Let's get at it. What we're doing is measuring this up, getting our piece cut off. I still don't have a hacksaw or a bandsaw, and I'm not even going to attempt to part it. I have not been having luck doing that, so we'll just uh, use a hacksaw and get that cut. This is a three-inch piece. I'm going to make it... Uh, I think I might make it three and a quarter. That'll give me, if I go three and a half, that'll give me probably too much, that'll be a lot of waste. If I go three and a quarter, that'll give me an eighth inch on either end, and I already know this has to be short. So I'm gonna cut this three and a quarter inch. That way I got plenty of material to work with. Yep. Yeah. Three and a quarter. Three and a quarter it is. There we go. So what we'll be doing is uh, going over to the, the vise and hacks on this out. Here we go. Welcome back. Boy, do I need to get me a bandsaw. That's not the funnest operation to do. However, we got her done. There is my starting blank. Uh, again, this was the mild steel that was supplied to me from Wilford. Thank you again. This is going back in my raw stockpile. Here is our blank that we'll be beginning to work with. As you can see, it's longer. I've got plenty of material to play with. The final piece is going to be shorter anyway than the original. So we got our dimensions. We've got plenty of material. This has the right inch and three eighths.
thickness. This is absolutely perfect. Such great material that's going to work out well for this post. And uh, we're ready to continue on. Um, I think the first thing I need to do is get this chucked up, get it running true, face this off, and then uh, we'll kind of determine what what steps to go with. I'll probably do the the center bore first. Um, the last time I actually used the drill press, that's something I want to do different. I've been having a better success using the tail stock and center drilling. So that's what we're going to do with this piece. Um, so that'll be after we face it off, that'll be the first thing we do. So I think what we're going to do is get this chucked up in the lathe and face it off and just continue on. I'm just gonna face this edge off first. Um, this is kind of a, I don't know if it's hot cut or cut with a bandsaw, I believe. Um, but I wanna get this trued up first, then I'll flip it over and we'll do the side that I cut and we'll keep going. Let's see. I'm gonna use this. But I need to have it a bit on an angle. think that'll work. Here we go. Looks good. Chamfer that edge and we'll flip it around. Good enough.
there we go. So that's the start of our piece. I got both sides faced off and this is going to be where I start center drilling this. This is all running concentrically. It's kind of nice starting with, with a good piece of clean stock. Um, so next operation will be to center drill this and then drill this out to match my 10 millimeter bolt, which I've got a drill bit for that. Um, and we'll bring you back. Welcome back. We're gonna continue on. Uh, like I said, the next step that I wanna do is drill the hole. This was the bit that I used last time. This is a, I even forget. 13 30 seconds drill bit. Now I know all this lathe and all that stuff's metric, but 13 30 seconds is close to how many millimeter? Well, it's 10 mil 10 millimeters the bolt. Um, actually, let me go get another bolt, maybe some threaded rod, um, but I'm trying to see what my options are. I'll probably just use another bolt, but I would like to recreate this with a 10 millimeter bolt, and I, I really like this design with the rounded top, so I may do that as well. I, I like that, the looks of it anyway. Um, but besides drilling the hole, I'll go get some threaded rod in a minute. I need to create a center. I know a lot of you said, just do a center punch in your material and that's where your hole will be. Well, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the center drill again. I'm gonna drill a center hole in order to, in order to start where I want my, my drill to be. So I'll get you set up and bring you right back. All right, welcome back. We got you set up. We're going to center drill this so that I can start my drill bit and get that going and hopefully make a nice concentric hole through this workpiece. This will be different. The last, the last one I made, I used a drill press and it, it was not centered, but it worked. Uh, this one, I want to use the tailstock and I want to make sure we do it the way we're supposed to do it. So I've got everything up here pretty close. We're going to lock that in and we're just going to take it slow and get a center hole going so then we can switch over to the drill bit. Okay, we got our center drill center point marked out. Now what we need to do is switch this switch this out for our drill bit and we'll just keep going. So far so good. Okay. All right, we got you set up. We're gonna give this a shot. I haven't actually successfully um, drilled a, a, a bored a hole with a drill bit on this tailstock yet, but I have been having luck. So I think this is gonna go well. We're gonna find out. Let's get this started.
we made it. Um, that sure did make a mess. We used a lot of oil and dripped it all over the place. But uh, we made it. We made our, our through hole. So I think what I want to do just to end this clip, I'm going to take it out of here and we're going to see the other side. We're going to see just how far off track we got. Um, hopefully it's fairly well centered, um, but we're going to find out. So let's, let's shut this off for now. Let's take this out of here. Let's see what happened. Huh. So there's the other end. There's our hole from the beginning. And I'll, maybe I'll measure this with a caliper and see how well we did. There's the other side. That looks, visually, that looks very centered. I'm quite happy with that. Good deal. I like it. Now we'll continue on. Welcome back. We did get our through hole drilled using the lathe, not the drill press. So I'm quite happy with that. Visually, it looks very concentric. Um, I'll take a couple quick measurements with the caliper. Nothing too, too critical. But I want to clean up some of my tools. I've been cleaning my lathe uh, from drilling a hole. That's a lot of material to hog out of there. And, uh, you know, as you can imagine, I had a ton of chips and just a big oily mess. So I want to get this cleaned up before I continue on. So this goes in the other room. Actually, I'm going to put this down here uh here's my again here's the tool post there's the original this is what we're trying to recreate but more refined doesn't it, it, you know you might think oh you're you're running out of material no th this has all this material that i don't need so this i've got plenty of material on both ends to work with um and again my through hole bolt, perfect. It's got just a little bit of a fit, little bit of a, you know, I don't need that super tight. That's not what this part is. But when I'd use the drill press, you can see the top is okay, but the bottom seems to be a little more wallered out. Um, so I'm excited to recreate this using the lathe, something that's a little more a little more precise, I suppose you could say. So there's the beginning of this piece. Um, I thought this would work, but these threads are different than, than the bolt that I'm using, the M10. I'm, I have another one, so I can use this solution again or use this bolt that I already have, but the threads on this one are just too long. What I, was, I may go to the hardware store and find something, but I kind of would really like to make something that resembles this so that I can mount it in there and actually have a, a nut that I can put on and take off. I don't know if that provides any additional strength or, or not, but I don't need to do that to finish this piece. That can be an additional project later on down the road. Um, but at any rate, this turned out really well. Let me get the calipers out and do a quick measurement here. Should have had this ready. There we go. There we are. Zeroed out. Again, this isn't necessarily a precision measurement. I just want to see how we ended up. There's It should be a 13, 30 seconds drill bit. <laughs> it is, how about that? So the hole on both ends turned out to match the drill bit, which is expected, move my finger there. That's good. Now, let's just see. Let's switch this back to fractional here. So what I'm doing is just measuring the the depth, the, the distance between the center hole on each side. So four, oh, 485, 483, 484 thou, really close. 
486. So I'm about three thou off center, four thou off center. Let's check this side. 480 thou. 484 thou. So again, I'm off center about four thou. So this 484 thou, this side should be 484 ish. 493 thou. So it's definitely not a centered hole. Uh, again, it doesn't matter for this part, but it's pretty dang close. Within 5 thou, um, you know, around, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I could, of course, put this in and shave off some of the outside, but I don't want to because that fits there. I'm just going to clean up that. This is going to be my end diameter for the top flange, inch and three eighths. Okay, so that's a recap of where we are now. I'm going to get this mounted up and figure out the next order of operation. Welcome back here. I got it set up and you know, order of operations is everything. We've had some comments on other videos. Um, they're not wrong. People that have mentioned that, um, just keep in mind, I'm still learning. Um, and I'm trying to think through the end product versus what I'm trying to accomplish. Um, and I realize that order of operations is important. Um, but right now what I'm going to do, you know, perhaps I should have not parted off any of this material until I was done, but that was like a 14 inch steel rod. Um, it's just way too long and I didn't want to cut it in half. I want to leave as much usable piece um, of the raw stock for future projects. So I went ahead and made this three and a quarter. Now where that might be a little difficult is when I'm trying to machine the final operation, which would be getting this flange set and this diameter here. You know, I don't want to chalk it up on on the threads. So talking this through, I think this is helpful, just if any of you are also in this situation that I'm in. I think what I might do, turn this down oversized to, to my uh, desired, this is 760 thou wide, so I might make it 800 thou. Then flip it over and chalk it up, or chuck it up here use the center, live center down here and go ahead and get my final diameter for the shaft done. And then I will make my flange proud. I'll make it wider than it needs to be, which will leave plenty of material down here for threading. And that will be my final op is the threading in order to, yeah, in order to, not chew up these threads as I'm mounting it. So that's what I'm gonna do. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this down to 800 thou. That gives me 40 thou of material to work with later. And to show you, if we look at the flat part that was not threaded, it's 700 and, depends on where you measure it, but 760 thou, 750 thou, this again. So now it's 750. Anyway, I'm going to go 800 thou, which will give me a shoulder to work on this diameter, which is 980 thou, which I'm going to go actually thicker than that. Um, I want to actually get a closer, tighter tolerance for this. Let's go ahead and take that out. I want to write that down just so I have something to shoot for. You probably you can't see what I'm doing here. What I'm doing is, there we go. I'm taking this off of here. What I'm talking about, this one, this was the remake that I made. And that one ended up at 995 thou, almost an inch. But it's, it's not too bad, but 
you know, it doesn't have to be super tight tolerance, but I do want it to be somewhat tight. So I may go with 995 thou again. I like that. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot for 995 thou for the diameter of, of the part. Yep, let me write that down. All right, so 800 thou, 800 thou, and the depth, all I really need is, is that depth, which we covered in other videos, and that's about 300 thou, 285 thou, Yeah, 300 thou or so. Um, but I'm gonna leave as much on there for threading as I can, because I can always turn that down and, and, and whittle that away. So, I'm gonna get this set up, and the first thing I'll do is get this blued up so I can measure, oh, 300, maybe I'll do uh, 350 thou up, maybe 400 thou. See, this one here is 500 thou. I don't need that much. So I might go ahead and do 400 thou. Anyway, I'm going to get that blued up and uh, we'll keep moving on here. Let's do that now. We'll let that dry, I'll bring you back, and we'll start trimming this down and getting everything set the way we want. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna go 350 thou in, and that's what we're gonna do. So that will be that will be what we're shooting for. So I'm gonna turn that down to 800 thou. I got quite a bit to remove. Um, this thing's inch and three eighths. So I've almost got to remove half that material. So let's get at it, and uh, and we'll keep measuring along the way.
Okay, so this ultimately is going to be the threaded, the threaded end, um, which is this guy here. Um, this is about 750, 760 thou, but I think what I'm gonna do, I, I just wanna bring this down to 800 thou, and we're gonna flip it over, and that's what we're gonna chuck this up on. And what we're gonna do is turn this portion down to meet this size. Um, I think I wrote it down here. We want that to be 995 thou. So we're gonna scooch that down to till we get an inch. And then, you know, we need this same depth here. This won't change. So I need to bring it down to 300 thou or sorry two inches 300 thou um, to start with it's going to be a little less than that two inches 295 thou but we're going to we're going to shoot for two inches 300 thou okay so i'm going to get this set up and we'll continue on All right, I switched it up. Since I've got so much extra material at the top, this ultimately is going to be this thinner flange here. I'm going to chuck it up on this side and we'll just, you know, it'll be a better way to, to perform this operation. I got more meat up here to uh, chuck it up and I'm gonna use a live center for stability and we're gonna get this turned down to 995. Out. So I'm going to shoot for an inch and then we'll get real careful. That'll be final dimensions, 995 thou. Then we'll do a test fit uh, in the sleeve. This will probably, this operation will probably conclude part one. And then I'm going to switch over to part two because part two will have threading, uh, the finishing and all the rest of the stuff. Um, this video is probably already getting long. So uh, this, this operation will conclude part one. So let's get at it.
All right, this is really close to our final dimension. Um, it probably will fit right in here. I've just been doing spring passes. This is what I meant when I said I can do better. Even the factory one, if you look at this, look how rough that is. Not, not that they care, not that you see it, not that it even matters, but this right here, pretty rough. My finish is, this is with my high speed steel ground that I ground, quite happy with this. Um, a little bit of scotch bright. I don't even need to sandpaper and that will clean up nicely. I'm gonna take a spring pass on this, a real light pass, cause it's 900, I'm shooting for 995. Right now it is one inch, 997. I mean, like, I, I don't need to take much off at all, but I do, I think I need to take a little bit off in order to, 996 out here, well, let's make sure, 997, 996, five. you know what I'm going to do? I'm not taking any more off. I'm going to call that good, and what I'm going to do is clean this up with some Scotch-Brite, then what we're going to do is test it in the tool holder. And if it fits down in there, that's gonna conclude part one of this remake. And um, and then we'll keep moving on and we'll finish this product. So let me get this cleaned up. Let me get this out of the way. Then we'll do a test fit. All right, grab some scotch Bright. here we go. This thing out of the way. Pretty smooth. You, you can visually see some variations. This is this is mild steel. This isn't chrome or anything, but I'm quite happy with that. I'm really anxious to try this. Try this in the actual tool holder. Let's just do it. Let's see what uh, what we ended up with. I still need to chamfer all this stuff, but I'm going to wait till the end to do that. Let's see if that fits in there. It should be pretty close. I like it. Can you see that? There we go. Fits in there. All right. And that'll be the top. Making good progress. Okay. Well, I'm gonna close it out right here. This is part one. I'll give you a close up. That finish turned out so much better than my original, original, new one. I can. I told you I could do better. I'm getting a lot better at this thing. This right here, it's functional, and this will be flush with. Uh, it'll actually match this flange up here. So, all right. I'm gonna conclude part one here. Get, this, get these clips uploaded, get them off the camera, and uh, we'll keep on moving on. Part two is going to have the threading and the finished product.